And are you a fix-it guy? A bit. Kind of a handy guy. You like? Do you like to junk around the house with a hammer and a screwdriver and stuff? And if I have to, I don't <laughs> like to. <laughs> That's true. If Nobody I, really likes to do that. Well, I don't like to wait. And nine times out of ten, if I know I can deal with it or handle it myself, I just like getting it done. Yeah. Pa- patience has never been one of my stronger virtues. Yeah. Well, plus, you know, the service call, the first half hour is like 175, and then... Oh, I could care less about that. Yeah, well, I, believe me, I'd rather not have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, I've found that uh, every time I have a, 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 a do-it-yourself project, it takes me about twice as long as I thought it would. Yeah. And that uh, just pisses me off. So, kind of wanted to start with, uh, with Avarice. Okay. Because I, I wonder if that's why our country is in the situation it is today. That, <laughs> that particular word, and then, of course, the song that you, that you wrote. But You know, I think that greed and self-absorption and self-serving mentalities are a huge yeah. reason yeah. why our country is in the position that it's in today. I think that... Uh, it's funny, I keep on going back to the movie Wall Street. Yeah, isn't that? And Michael Douglas's speech yep. as Gordon Gecko, where mm-hmm. he says, greed is good. Yeah. Um, it can be when it is a catalyst for development and the furthering of capitalism in its true sense. Mm-hmm. But when it leads to uh, things that antitrust laws were set up for in the first place mm-hmm. um, when it leads to uh, the bending of the rules for the people who can benefit most while everyone around them is uh, trodden upon and destroyed and their futures are exploited uh, when it uh, cripples the entire financial system yeah. of our country and the world as we know it greed is not good um, and uh, I, I, I think that The financial institutions are not the only institutions that have been subject Mm -hmm. to uh, unscrupulous practices, unscrupulous business practices. And it's unfortunate that it takes a time of crisis for people to finally wake up and realize what has been going on all along. How, how How do we keep an eye on each other, though? You know, I mean, is it somebody who comes up to you, I mean, or me or my neighbor and says, hey, you know what? You have enough cars, you have enough stuff, because does it start personally or, do, you well, know? I don't think it's the issue of, I, I, it, I don't think it's anybody's position to judge who has yep. enough. I think it should, just should still be an equal playing field. Yeah. And everyone should still have the opportunity to do as much as they will to do. Uh, limitations shouldn't be set on an individual in terms of how much they can or cannot produce or have or create. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in that. I I, I do believe in it being an evil, even playing field, that everybody should have the opportunities, that uh, the marketplace should be open to everyone, that the people lower down on the totem pole should have the same opportunities for advancement and that you don't neglect the people that make you rich, that you don't abuse and uh, disrespect and take advantage of the people that make you rich. Uh, There's nothing wrong with working hard for what you get and getting it. That's part of what you know, capitalism is yeah. in, in, in its inception. So, uh, and I still am, a, I'm, a, I'm a libertarian by nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I'm a believer in small government mm-hmm. and an open uh, free trade society. But, and I don't know that necessarily all of the institutions that, our dear president wants to develop to the full extent that he wants them to be developed are necessarily in our nation's best interest. Mm -hmm. I I, I, I don't think that you can make everyone a watchdog. I think that you need to take away those elements within our Congress, those special interest groups Mm -hmm. who've had, who've gotten themselves, you know, 
fat over the years from getting contributions from the wrong people in the wrong way, letting legislation in go by, way. letting things fall under the rug, uh, letting things be ignored, letting standards and practices go by the wayside. That is what needs to be dealt with. That's what needs to be eliminated. It needs to be an even playing field. It can't just be uh, the people who sit on the Commerce Committee the people who sit on uh, the most powerful committees in both houses of Congress uh, being given the huge incentives that they are given by the multinational corporations who continue to perpetuate uh, the status quo. That's the issue to me. I, I, I think that there's an issue with uh, Big Brother coming in and yep. expanding government and taking away more of the individual's ability to govern themselves, the individual's ability to run themselves, uh, it shouldn't require a huge police state. It should require conscience. It should require uh, people's uh, just relative decency. It should, you know. So is it our responsibility, people with a conscience, to, to call our congressman or congresswoman? Is it our, is it, is it our responsibility to, to help keep that in check? I mean, really, how do, how do we get in back essence, to it? You know what I mean? In essence, it's really the congressman or congresswoman's responsibility. Well, but sure. they've forgotten 90% of the time why they were elected in the first place. It's become a business. It's, it's, <laughs> and it has been for many, many years. Um, you know, it's a stepping stone for them to other things. It's a means of building their own capital. It's a means of uh, advancing their own stature and their own levels of wealth. And uh, they forget that they are indebted public servants. That is the nature of their employment. That is what they do. They work for us, and it's not vice versa. And they forget that. And what could potentially help remind them? Taking away some of the things that they're so accustomed to getting and having. Right. You know, putting them back to the position where they are only earning a government salary, right. where it isn't a matter of kickbacks and private jets being afforded to them and limos be driving them from point A to point B and vacations being offered to them left and right by the multinational corporations who have been allowed to do this. And it's not a normal part of practice with public officials. Uh, and then there isn't an evil, even playing field. Then the average small businessman can't compete. Right. Why do you stay in touch with this? I mean, is this something your parents brought you up at to make no, sure that you're... No, it had nothing to do with my parents. I'm a political scientist by nature. I have a yeah? degree in political so science. So this, just, just, this is just inside of you that you have it's, to... I've been passionate about it since I've been in my late teens. So how do you stay up on it and, and feel like you're getting the truth as opposed to the left side or the right side? Because that's, that's my struggle, you know what I mean? How do I find where the real, you, you have to, the real story is? You have to take a little bit of both mm. in and then discern the BS from the real McCoy. And, and, and somewhere in between, as far as the right goes and as far left right. as the left goes, is reality. Yeah. And you have to, you know, much like uh, trying to find a diamond within the coal, you really need to scrape off the outer surface and, 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 and see what's, what's true. Um, it, it, it's not an easy thing for anyone, yeah. let alone someone who has an education in it in particular to discern. It, 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 it's a confusing thing. Uh, it's a consistently confusing thing. Well, does confusion then le lead to frustration for people like you and, and sometimes people like me? You know, you know what I mean? Can it lead to that point or can it lead to apathy for an awful lot of people too? Because then nothing gets done. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I'm confused. Now I've got to decide what am I going to do with that? Well, Am more, I going to research it more? Am I going to just, okay, you know what? I've got my bowling league is tonight, so I better get to that. <laughs> first of all, practice what you preach. Yeah. First and foremost. And if you do believe in something, then you should show that by example in terms of how you live your life. Um, secondarily, being apathetic to something won't help anything. Right. Um, it's a sense of helplessness that leads to that apathy. And the helplessness is perpetuated by the status quo of, of the situation. And the only way that you can affect 
things, the only way that you can change that which has led to your apathy is by doing something active. It's not by being passive. You have to try and continue to speak about issues. You have to be involved in issues of public policy. You have to have an opinion and not be afraid to voice it when asked to voice it. Well, like in the line, in the, in the song, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. like, in the, like in the song Haunted, show no emotion and it can destroy your soul. Absolutely. That's really what you're saying there, right? Well, that's, in that particular line, I mean, that, but then, that song in particular was reflective of the mentality that exists in Los Angeles, in mm. particular, and um, there it's accepted to numb yourself to everything, to not to not show too much emotion, to or per, or perceived emotion, I should say. In, um, interesting choice of words. Yeah, you. Everyone's an actor and an actress out there, <laughs> and um, they're acting all the time. <laughs> yes, and it's very hard to discern real emotion from perceived emotion, and uh, it's sometimes easier for them to simply shut themselves off in certain ways, and sometimes they're left no choice. Is it? Is it because that area, I mean, is there a darkness to it because there, because there is all this facade? No and question. I'm, I don't even mean to jump to no, that no, song, no. but you know, but... No question about it. There's a tremendous darkness. It's what drove me from there. I lived there for five years, and it's a land full of social vampires who prey off the misery and suffering of others for a living. Did you feel like you had to live there because you're in the entertainment business and it was easier to get to the people or the places or the or the things um, or was it hey I'm, this is this is where rock stars live no no offense to whatever rock star yeah. means to people. Yeah. So uh, I didn't feel like I had to live anywhere, but I definitely wanted to be a part of it on a certain level. Um, I wanted to do what I could to further the cause for the band in general and being amongst the people that make it happen certainly couldn't hurt. Um, But on a selfish level, I just wanted to be somewhere warm. (laughs) And Chicago during the winter time is pretty brutal. So I loved the countryside. I loved riding my motorcycle up Pacific Coast Highway all the way up into Malibu. I loved uh, 70 degrees and sunny every day. Well, you just need to tour in those areas in the winter, huh? Yeah. yeah. Get the heck out. Although, Although I do, as big cities go... I couldn't love Chicago more. I, yeah. just, I love it as big cities go. If only it weren't miserable six to eight months yeah. of the year, it would be well, there'd no be no reason to leave. Too. Traffic's a bit of an issue for me, but traffic's a bit of an issue in any big city. Yeah, it's not as bad in Chicago as it is New York or L.A. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not driving in New York. I will drive in L.A. But, yeah, but New York is you know no what? point. <laughs> Get me downstairs into the subway. Yeah, I'm, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm good to Most go. Most efficient way. Divide. Uh, I love the line, I don't want to be another player losing in this game. I'm trying to impress upon you that we're not the same. Were you kind of following the crowd when you went to L.A.? I mean, a little bit, you know what I mean? Not, not so much. Yeah. I, I was more like, a, I more had the mentality of like an explorer trying to stake a claim. <laughs> you know? It was like, all right. That's an interesting place to explore. Let me see what I can accomplish. Although you're really exploring you, aren't you? In a way. Yeah. In a way. In a way. Um, Yeah. It's it's so tragic how people are afraid to embrace their own sense of individuality for fear of being excommunicated for fear of feeling like an outsider or not being accepted by the norm or the populace. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I think that that's tragic. I think that everyone's own individuality is a treasure and that the I'm things you, that brother. make a person who they are should be embraced and they should be loved for it, not despite of it. Is that just an insecurity inside of all of us? I mean, where, where does that, where does that um, come from that we decide, you know what, this is this is an easier path to follow for me if I join the crowd because I I don't I don't want to join that crowd. It's something that starts in school when you're a kid. It's and it doesn't end, does it? Um, or it hasn't ended 
per se it does those little feelings of I'm, I'm on I'm on the outside why if you don't allow it to end it doesn't end I've never personally followed anyone unless there's somebody that I feel has some merit that I want to make a part of myself yeah. some value that I want to embrace but and there are many that have done that for me but you know i'd rather the you know the mountain come to muhammad <laughs> I, I i i don't like to jump on the bandwagon for people or do things specifically to yeah. belong or fit uh, I, I'm, I feel i'm a good enough person i have a lot to offer as an individual i have a lot to offer as a human being and so that should be enough to anyone and if it isn't then you know something i don't really need to be spending my time with you that's interesting have you ever felt yourself teetering toward loneliness, though, because of that? Many times. Yeah. Many times. But I'd rather have genuine companionship, yeah. real companionship, than make-believe friends that are there for some sort of uh, fashion significance or some trend or some, uh, some sort of... Uh, they have this fascination with being with someone because of what they've achieved or sure. attained. I, 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 as long as I have enough real friends that I can count even on one hand, that yeah. satisfies me. And I'm fine with that. I don't need to have you know, hundreds of people who don't really know anything about me or care anything about me as a real person, but just want to be a part of a party. You have a lot of you have a good discernment ne mechanism in you, must be, because you've got to discern the news, <laughs> you've got to discern the fake from the real out in L.A., and you've got to discern who's, who's genuine to you. I mean, I wish I had that more. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I think I have it, but sometimes it's easier not to call on it because, again, ah, you know what? Everybody else is riding this bus. Yeah. I can hop on it. So it's hard. That's, that's a blessing. I mean, I really believe that. I mean, or, or, or a gift or something. Even if you decide to ride the bus for a while, you can choose your own seat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, just because something happens to be a, something that's shared by others doesn't automatically make it you know, bad or wrong, but you can definitely do it in your own fashion, in your own way, and in a way that makes you most comfortable. The song before that, Criminal, about searching for escape from that sort of feeling, is it? From a relationship which drives you to the extent of thinking mm. criminally, of yeah. bringing you to the brink of having very horrible thoughts. <laughs> um, you know, what power will enable me to bury my mission? Wow. There's some, that's got to be something powerful. Something that can just tear you something. apart. Yeah, Looking for something that can actually give you that strength to tear yourself from it. And then what power will enable me to make, to make this decision? Despair has fallen over me the way to hide agony, embracing my calamity to save myself once and for all. To finally save yourself. That's what the song is yes. really saying, isn't it? Yes. I just want people to save themselves. You know, I mean, I genuinely do. And I, I, I would hope that... Is, do you feel like that's, in a way, your, your calling or your vocation that you're here to say to people those sort of those sort of things absolutely um this these songs are all meant to be certainly cathartic certainly uh thought-provoking but first and foremost they are meant to be empowering and they are meant to be able to give someone the strength and the ability to do what they could not do otherwise do you do you use images that are dark looking i put dark in quotes there um to to gather that sort of crowd because you know they need that message um is that i think that we use dark imagery because it just serves our palate it's much more for selfish reasons all right that's for, fair um we just like images that are dark um and it, it also we also have to be respectful to what we've created as far as a bed of music is concerned. Mm -hmm. It has to fit the vibe 
of what's coming out musically. And if we had images of rainbows and puppy dogs on here, it probably <laughs> wouldn't fit very well. Your next band. Yeah. <laughs> rainbows and puppy dogs. Well, then talk to me about like the, the song The Night, because you know what, I, I question Give In to the Night, that lyric in there. It, that, that feels um, to me to be, when, when I hear Give In to the Night, it feels to me to be um, not standing up for what goodness is, whatever. Again, I'm, well, I'm going to put that word in quotes, but you know. The way that the night specifically is depicted in that song is as an entity. Something that sets you free that enables you to be that which you truly are. It shelters you. It cloaks you in its darkness. It hides you in a way, but still enables you to truly be yourself. You can set yourself free. You can let your proverbial hair down. That's the idea mm -hmm. of the night. Uh, that, that is the time when I most feel at peace and I most feel that I'm able to be myself, that I can cast aside my concerns of the thousands of eyes that peer into you on a daily basis in the daylight. Mm. The night is that comforting embrace that enables you to open yourself, that enables you to truly be who you are. So is it a place for you that, that when you really come alive, or, or is it a, um, a place of solace, a place of, of comfort, like you both. said? Okay. It can be both. So you're a nighttime guy? I mean, you would prefer to get up at 3 in the afternoon and go? You in know, a way, I, or? I, I, I would I would love it if I could wake up at three in the afternoon. I don't sleep much. Uh oh, well, I get two to five hours a night. Oh, really? Yeah, that's about it. And um, but there's something about the vibe of twilight, and you know, a dark sky as opposed to a brightly lit sky. Yeah. You know, there's just yeah more magic to it. There's more there's more romance to it. There's more mystery to it. There's more action most yeah. of the time. You know, don't get me wrong. I like, yeah. you know, daytime activities right. too. I don't have pale skin. You know, yeah. I like going out in the sun. But there's this certain majesty to the night. And again, I, I, I treat it in the song as if it's this freeing sort of entity that envelops you and allows you to be who you truly are. The, the only reason I ask the question like that is because I've always thought a, of, you know, it's a brand new day, the sun comes up, we start the new day, rather than it's a brand new day, the sun goes down. Well, you know, but I see kind of what you're saying. Part it's, of that might come from my background. Yeah. Um, in in Judeo-theology... Which you studied for years and years, right? 17. Um, <laughs> 17 to be exact. Yeah. One month and four days. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost that meticulous. Um, the days start at night. Nightfall begins the new day. Hmm. I didn't know that. Yes. Um, and so maybe that's yeah. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you put so much time and energy and, and effort in, into studying it that... I was being bred to be a rabbi, hmm. essentially, mm -hmm. um, by my, you know, I had been trained as a cantor as a young boy, someone who leads the Jewish congregation mm -hmm. in prayer. Um, I had always been very adept at Talmudical law and Talmudical study. That's what eventually led me to pursue a pre-law scenario in, in university. Um, I was very advanced. I was at what is called a, a, a base medrash level, which is like a collegiate level okay. of Talmudic study within high school wow. already. Um, so it, it, it came fairly easy to me. It's a lot of deductive reasoning. It's a lot of logic and things that I'm, I, I, I'm generally fairly good at. And um, it just didn't... It got to a point where... I was. St I had to question what I was doing out of habit, as it, opposed to what I was doing out of true belief. Yeah. Right. Seventeen years later. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes know. it takes seventeen years yeah. to find your uh, your spot. Well, it's <laughs> taken me uh, many more years than that to try yeah. to find. And I'm still searching. I still feel today. I, I still do as well. Yeah. I still do as well. By no means have I found right. the end 
to uh, to the search. It's it's interesting to me. I guess when I was when I was in high school, I thought, well, man, when you get to middle age, you've got to be able to figure out all the answers. And now that I'm closer to that, my dad who just passed away a while ago. I'm sorry. He, thank you. Um, he. Um, I wonder why people say thank you, but I do appreciate you saying that. Um, I, I, he was in his 80s, and he still didn't feel like he found all the answers. And I'm kind of going like, wait, when do you find the answers? And I just, and maybe it is just a, like many other interviews that I've done, you know, it, it is a beautiful journey that we're on trying to find the answers. And I, I can appreciate that journey. I believe it's Plato that said that the beginning of knowledge is admitting that you know nothing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm sure that happened for me after high school because I knew everything in high school, yeah, of course. Yeah. Or you thought you did. Yeah. <laughs> well, you well, maybe maybe that's why I jumped to a song like "Perfect ins- Insanity" um, about f- fighting your own brain for for lack of a better yeah, yeah. It, um, phrase. That song was pr- one of the very few that is meant to be taken slightly tongue in cheek. Okay, um, but it definitely is reflective of the perceived psychosis that people are so quick to diagnose in the individual. Um, well, if you're laying in, I don't know how long you're laying in bed, but if you're not sleeping in it very much, you're thinking a lot. Your, yeah, your brain's gone. So I don't know where perfect insanity fits in that, uh, <laughs> in that noggin of yours when it comes to the actual, but there's something about it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's something uh, obviously in the, Uh, oxymoronical nature of just the title of the song perfect insanity Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, it it definitely uh, is something that uh, most people can be frightened of yet it all depends on what you define as being insane yeah Uh, some of the truly brilliant minds of our time had been dismissed in their times as insane oh yes Galileo um uh, da Vinci, um, you know, many people. Um, yeah. So, Van Gogh. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you cut off your ear. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. Got, well, uh, he, I, he should have laid off the absence. Man. So he so, <laughs> <laughs> in torn. I don't know if that. I don't know if it dovetails at all into that song, but, but again, fighting sort of the thoughts inside of you, isn't it? That song has become many of the disturbed wives mm. uh, their favorite interesting uh, Dan- uh, Danny's wife Nicole um, Mikey's wife Tina uh, and it was written when I was in a place where I wasn't certain about a relationship that I was in where I was questioning the future of it where I was questioning the positioning of it and felt myself coming back to it on numerous occasions because of how it had made me feel at one point in time and that was what I couldn't I couldn't leave yet and I couldn't neglect it I couldn't neglect the intensity of it and uh, it causes you to be torn sometimes even though you go through the difficulties that a relationship can bring but you still remember the fire that existed. You still remember the passion. You remember the intensity that once was, and it draws you back to the flame, much like the moth to the flame. You know it's going to burn you. You know it. But you keep <laughs> going back. Stinking flame. Mm-hmm. Stinking moth inside <laughs> of me. I love it in The Curse. Uh, I've, I've held on too long. Just to let it go now, will my inner strength get me through it somehow, defying the, the curse that has taken hold? Never surrender. I will never be overcome. I love that. I appreciate that. People, more, more of what you're called to do, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the other line in there that, that I found interesting, too dark for forgiveness. I can't seem to do anything right you know, when you're really in that place of just feeling lost and you're just beating yourself up. But... Is somebody too dark for forgiveness, or is that just one of those fleeting feelings that it we hope sometimes is a fleeting feels feeling? that way? Yes, yeah. I don't think anyone really is too dark for forgiveness unless you're someone like Hitler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that 
sometimes it feels that way. Yeah. Sometimes you feel like you're just marked and you can't escape some of the karma that seems to surround you or be able to discern why it's happening. Right. See, now, to me, that's the awesome thing about the night is that I still have the opportunity to put my head on the pillow and whether I sleep for, because I don't sleep a lot either, but I do sleep more than you. Mm. But, but when, I put, can, when I can put my head on the pillow and whether I wake up at 2 o'clock or, or 6 o'clock in the morning, I can still feel like it's new. I love that. I lo- and I can still go, you know what? That crap that I was thinking about yesterday, all the stuff we were, you were just talking about, I, I love that about the night, you know. I love that gift that the night gives me, if you will. It frees so, you. Yeah. There is a freeing thing about closing your eyes and sort of, I, I wonder where we go when we sleep, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I sort of go, I've laid in bed at night thinking about, what is sleep? Yeah. <laughs> and now that's, that's not good to lay there that long. <laughs> That'll keep you from sleeping. That's true. Here's something that I think keeps uh, not enough people from sleeping is uh, the song Facade and the, and the, and the subject matter in it. Um, and I'm really glad it isn't the, the, the wives in the bands, in your band's favorite song. Oh, no, no. Although they, it may they, be they just would, to, to bring a, attention to it. They would have no way of contextualizing that in any yeah. real way from their current experiences, yes. that's for sure. But, um, but, but spousal It's always abuse been very tragic to me that so many women perpetuate, continue to maintain an existence... Yeah. That is unjustified, that is unforgivable, and unnecessary. Yeah. And for what? Yeah. Why do you maintain this veneer of happiness when there's chaos happening in your house, when you have to deal with no. a constant series of abuse, uh, when you have to, you know, swallow this? Yeah. And, 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 it's I understand the fear of the unknown. Mm-hmm. I understand that, you know, trying to hold on to all that you know. I, I, I get it, but I can't justify it. I can't justify why someone like Rihanna yeah. would try to sweep what Chris Brown did to her under the rug. I yeah. can't justify it in my yeah. head. And I hope that women everywhere know that they don't have to deal with an abusive situation, that they don't have to keep themselves quiet, that they don't need to uh, fall victim to these types of scenarios, and that they find the strength to come out of it. And and I think there's a part of them that thinks makeup actually covers up that pain. Mm. But if you look at people's eyes... You, you always can sense it just in the aura of a person. You don't even need to see it from an uh, aesthetic aspect. They're, they're th- people feel different when they're in a situation like that. Do you play that song? That Facade? Shows now? Yeah. We haven't this yeah. cycle yet. I just, I just wonder how the fans would react to that more um, in-your-face social issue that there is out there you know i mean it's it's hard to pick and choose you know we 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 have an hour and a half to play on this tour in particular it's the longest we've had this cycle so far and you can't neglect your catalog and at this point you know we're probably coming up on what i believe is going to be our ninth number one single yeah so you have to play the hits because that's what the fans want to hear. Then you have to sneak in those bits of pieces of new material that you can, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's hard to choose. It's a good problem to have, to have to choose between four yeah. records worth of material. Yeah, that's a good problem to have. 